first and foremost, a huge thanks and shout out to Purcell Auto Sales in Canby, Indiana for allowing me to come out and film this really nice Saab 93. The world of Saab is about as confusing as it comes. One car with up to six engine choices and three transmission choices. For one car, I will be the first to admit that I'm not an expert when it comes to Saab. While I love the cars themselves, it really never studied them the way I feel I may have should, so I will feel woefully unprepared for this video. That's my transparency, transparency statement for the day. In 1997, it was announced that Saab would be revising the naming for their entire lineup, with the previous 900 becoming the 93, not to be confused with the 1955 to 1960 Saab 93. Anyway, first generation ran from 1998 to 2003 and set on GM's GM2900 platform. When the 93 replaced the outgoing 900, Saab claimed that over 1,100 changes were made to the new car, including revised suspension and increased safety and crashworthiness capabilities. In 2002, for the 2003 model year, the second generation of the 93 was introduced and ran until 2014, sitting on the GM Epsilon platform. The engines were switched from the Saab H Eco Power engines to the GM Ecotech variants. Four trim levels were available, the Linear, Vector, Arc, and the Range Topping Aero. Hey everyone, hope everyone's doing well. And in today's in-depth review series, we're taking a look at this very nice and very well equipped 2011 Saab 93. Now this is a 93 linear. It is a turbo four all wheel drive. It is painted in jet black. And it does feature the black and beige leather interior. I've always liked the Saab 93s. I've actually always liked Swedish cars. And so being able to review a really nice example of this car uh, is quite a treat. I know it's more of a GM based vehicle. So it took a lot of the Saab character out of it. Or so we thought. Um, by further exploration, I found there's still a lot of Saab heritage in this car. Now I will put full pricing on the screen. However, I do not have an actual window sticker. So we're kind of going to estimate that full options listed in the description box below. So make sure you check that out. It'll be as accurate as I possibly can. This will be a full in-depth review. We're gonna cover everything from the exterior to the interior, powertrain, fuel economy, and everything else in between. The engines on these Saabs is where I get confused. See, there's three variants of the two liter turbo, the low pressure, medium pressure, and the high pressure turbos. The Vector and the Arc had the pre medium pressure, while the Arrow have in the high pressure. Our Linear has the low pressure 2.0 turbo engine. This engine is derived of the GM Ecotech and serves as a 2 liter light pressure turbo B207 dual overhead cam 16 valve inline 4 cylinder engine. This engine is of aluminum block and head construction with 12.3 psi of boost and utilizes the Saab Trionic A engine management system and sports a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio. This engine creates 210 horsepower at 5,500 rpm and 221 pound feet of torque at 2,500 rpm. This 9.3 can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in about 6.8 seconds. 0 to 100 miles per hour comes in at 16.5 seconds, with a quarter mile hitting at 15.8 seconds and an 83 mile per hour trap speed. Top speed is drag limited to 145 miles per hour. The Saab 9.3 comes equipped with a 16.4 US gallon fuel capacity and consumes 4.5 gallons per 100 miles driven, with an estimated total driving range of 361 miles. EPA fuel economy figures are 19 miles per gallon in the city. 27 miles per gallon on the highway and a combined average of 22 miles per gallon. While a manual transmission was standard, our 93 is equipped with a 6-speed Centronic Azen AF46 automatic transmission. This transmission features manual shift capability via lever or steering wheel paddles and has a 3.33 to 1 final drive ratio. All right, now as we walk along the rear of the vehicle, we are actually gonna look at it in more in depth, but as you can see, it's a very elegant looking car, very understated. 
All right, around the rear of the uh, 93, it's a very nice aerodynamic and very flowing body style. Looks really good in the jet black paint. As you can see, it does have that heritage roof line that Saab has always had. That nice flowing arrow back all the way down to the smooth uh, trunk lid area. Into these uh, clear lens tail lamps here. During the day, they're all clear. They have a black bezel trim around them and divides all the quadrants. So you have your bright rear fog lamp, brake lights, and of course your tail lights, your turn indicators, and your reverse lights. And the trunk lid, you do have the 93 designation. Down below, you do have large dual exhaust tips. You have the really nice solid uh, plate bracket, your Saab logo right here. The Turbo 4 XWD for all wheel drive. Very nice uh, thing to have in uh, colder climates with snow is having that active all wheel drive system. And we're gonna catch alongside the profile of the car. It does have a very nice Saab look to it. Very kind of almost upright windscreen with that flowing uh, fastback rear roof line that Saabs are known for. Scaring is power assisted vehicle speed sensitive variable rate rack and pinion with 2.97 turns lock to lock and a 16 to 1 steering ratio. Turning diameter is 39 cur feet curb to curb. And the wheels on this car are an aftermarket 18 by 8 inch Torin TR60 wheels in a matte gunmetal finish and are shod in 235-40 R18 Advanced Sport AS all season tires. Brakes of course are four wheel disc brakes with ventilated front and rear rotors. These brakes are assisted by four wheel ABS, electronic stability control, traction control and electronic brake force distribution. Alright as we walk along the front of the car, as stated with the rear, we're also going to do the same with the front, we're going to go over it more in depth, but as you can see, it is a very uh, Saab looking Saab, I don't know how else to say it. Taking a look around the rear, or the front of the uh, 93 rather, it's getting kind of dark outside, we don't have light left, a lot of light left. Especially with this jet black, but it looks really cool in this shot. Of course, uh, we're going to kind of go over it. Very uh, nicely aerodynamic folding side view mirrors. They are heated as well. You have uh, indicator repeaters on the fenders. And of course, that traditional Saab uh, scalloped hood. Goes all the way down to the front into almost a, a BMW 5 Series kind of looking headlamp. You do have LED side markers here. You do have uh, amber turn indicators, an LED light pipe here for your driving light, and of course projector beam front headlamps, high beams there. Of course this vehicle is also equipped with the uh, high pressure headlamp washer system. Now down below, those little holes there would actually hold fog lamps, but this vehicle does not have front fog lamps. Of course looking around the front, the vehicle does have the traditional Saab grille. It's in all black. You can see the Saab designation here. And of course your Saab badge proudly displayed front and center. All right, now before we get inside, let's take a quick look at the key. It's a very odd looking key. It does have the Saab logo on the front, as you can see. It is a very thick, uh, soft touch key. Saab logo on the, on the back side of it, actually. And on the front, we do have a couple buttons, lock, unlock, trunk release, and a panic button. And it is a wireless transmitter, it's not an actual key itself. However, this vehicle does not have smart key access. So you have to lock and unlock it pretty traditionally, but it's pretty easy to do. All right, let's hop inside. All right, so inside, as you see, wide opening doors, facilitate a very nice entry exit. And you do have eight way power adjustable seats high adjustable seat belts. And of course, you can find your perfect driving comfort position, as well as a manual tilt and telescoping steering wheel. All right, and there's the interior overview here, as you can see. It is a very, uh, turn the lights off here. It is a very nice, well-equipped vehicle. We will take a quick look at the door cards. The black and the beige are bisected by this genuine burl wood trim. You do also have the satin silver door poles, power lock switch here. On the A-pillar, you do have your power mirror controls, power windows with window lockout, the satin black door pole, trunk release here, map pockets here, stereo uh, speakers in the door, and on the driver's side 
instrument cluster or, or driver's side instrument panel, you do have your automatic headlamp control, parking lights, and regular headlamps. This blank switch would be your front fog lamp, so this car is not equipped. This is your rear fog lamp. As stated before and shown, it is a leather wrapped tilt and telescoping steering wheel. Down in the driver's side footwell, you do have footwell illumination, hood release, and just a clutch and brake pedal. We've also got Saab branded all weather floor mats. We do have this little uh, storage pocket here in the front of the seats for the driver and passenger. Eight way power adjustments. And let's go ahead and take a look at the seats. The seats in these cars are actually very comfortable. They're very supportive. They do have anti-whiplash uh, head restraints and just a very comfortable car. The seats also do feature lumbar support. They're actually adjusted by this, uh, or this turn wheel here on the side of the seat. They've also got seat mounted uh, side impact airbags. In addition, the seats are also heated. All right, now that we're inside, let's pan through the interior and show more details. Nice thick rimmed three spoke leather wrapped steering wheel. Does have the Saab logo in the middle. Do have some satin silver uh, accents here. Let's go ahead and turn on the light, the interior lighting here. And on the steering wheel, we do have a plethora of controls that we can go over. First of all, we have our uh, shift paddles up here, uh, upshift and downshift. Then we have our Bluetooth and phone controls over here, our menu clear button over here, and then our uh, audio controls are over here. Now, this little button here controls info and of course the set. And by doing that, you can go into the gauge cluster and you can actually uh, see all your different readouts. So you can hit settings and then go through all your settings it shows your exterior temperature, distance to empty, your uh, instantaneous fuel economy, trip, your average speed, and just a uh, complete readout. It also has the gear position. Now, at the time of this recording, this vehicle has 96,091 miles on it. All right, and taking a look at the uh, multifunction controls, we do have cruise control over here, and our high beam and flash to pass, and of course, our indicators. Over on the right-hand side, we have our wiper washer controls that also control the headlamp washers. All right, straight in front of us is a uh, typical Saab instrument cluster. It does kind of have a GM look to it, but it's actually very Saab. All green illumination, save for the pointers, and those are white. So over here, we have a 7,000 RPM tack, a 160 mile per hour speedometer. And then of course, over here on the right, we have a turbo turbo boost gauge, we have our coolant temperature and our fuel level. We have also got an indicator for our uh, parking lights. Now over here on this uh, cluster here, we do have a button that says night panel. And now that it's getting kind of dark out, you can see the illumination and this will work really cool. So what we have is night panel. And what that does is it extinguishes all unnecessary illumination and gauge functions. So while you're driving at night, it's a long overnight uh, haul. Basically, all you have is just a uh, simple scale of your speedometer all the way up to 90 miles per hour, and everything else is completely extinguished, all the interior illumination and everything like that. To bring that back, just press your night panel again, and everything comes back to life. Alrighty, moving over the top of the dash, as you can see, it's a very narrow dash, but we do have some speakers up there. We've actually got three of them. We've also got our light sensor for our automatic headlamps. Moving down the center stack, we do have some positional air vents here, but these really trick toggle switches here. You can move them up and down, left and right, of course, and you can turn them on and off. And then down here, we have passenger airbag indicator, instrument panel, brightness and dim, the night panel feature, and just a, uh, a, a button that you can program. This is your stability control. This is our AM FM uh, uh, CD player. Does have Sirius XM satellite radio too, I believe and um, it's basically a GM head unit. So, you know, it kind of is what it is. But it does have RDS and all that kind of stuff. Oh, it does not have XM. But you can do some setups and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, moving down, we do have climate control. It is a dual zone climate control, driver and passenger temperature controls. You can turn it to auto. You can set your fan speed here, your blend modes here for defroster, panel, floor, or a mix of all three. You can also turn your fan off completely or turn it on high. A segmented uh, display will show your fan speed. And of course, passenger can uh, change his or her own temperature as well. 
and you can put it in recirculate mode. It does have an audio auxiliary input jack here, which I did not see until just now, and a cup holder. That's cool. I'll bet that will break, but it hasn't yet, so, you know. Down here, heated seat controls, two-stage heated seats, AC off, four-way flashers, rear defroster, and the passenger side heated seat control. Moving the shift lever out of the way reveals a dual-level amount of storage here. We do have a larger cubby here, smaller cubby here, and a 12-volt power point. Moving down this panel, it's hard to see now, but this is all burl wood down here, which is really nice. You do have your key ignition switch down here, very Saab style. And you have the console here. One thing is not like the other. This is just a panel. This is your handbrake. Nice integration. And in here, in this roll top, we have an additional cup holder. And not to be outdone, here we have a nice padded armrest, which opens up to reveal storage. It's very hard to see, but we've also got a 12 volt power point inside there as well. So overall, the interior of the uh, 9.3 is just a very nice place to be. It's a very comfortable, very quiet car. And even after um, several years, it's still holding up pretty well. And of course, if it's getting dark, so we're trying to hurry this along the best we can. Now overhead, we do have overhead automatic uh, dimming rear view mirror, and it does have three channel home link universal garage door opener. And we've also got overhead map lights. We've also got dome lights here. And you can also, it's a dome override, so you can turn it off, turn it on with the doors or have your lights on. Power sunroof controls right here. And of course we do have pull down uh, sun visors with illuminated vanity mirrors. And the sun visors do swing out, but they do not slide out. We also have fixed in place overhead assist handles and high adjustable seat belts. All right, let's take a look at the rear seat now. We're gonna open the door. And as you can see from this little clip here, getting in and out of the third or the rear seat is very easy. It's a very nice, uh, comfortable rear seat. It does offer three-point shoulder belts, high adjustable head restraints. You've also got a full down center armrest. You have positional air vents, cup holders in the bottoms of the seat cushions. And of course, we've also got a trunk pass-through. Rear seats are 60-40 split folding. Take a look at the rear door panels here. Just the same design as the front. We have the black and the beige bisected by burl wood trim. We've got satin silver door poles, power window switch, satin black door poles, uh, mat pockets. And a really good detailed look at the seats here reveal a 60-40 split folding seat that's only activated by the levers in the back. And as stated before, it does have high adjustable head restraints on the outboard seats, three point belts for all passenger seating areas. Just another quick look at the armrest here, just a flat armrest. And then here you have your trunk pass through. And here are the cup holders. The way they pop out is pretty cool. Positional air vents. And it's also important to note, important to note that rear seat passengers also have uh, seat back storage pockets on both sides. And our all weather floor mats continue back here as well. And then the rear seat passengers also have overhead illumination, overhead grab bars, coat hooks, and just about anything they'd like, except for heated seats. There's no heated seats back here.
to open the trunk is easy. We're gonna go under the driver's side door panel. We're gonna press that button there. That'll unlatch the trunk. And opening the trunk is easy as opening it up just like that. It is counterbalanced on springs, so it's very easy to open. You have a carpeted uh, area here. You have your little grab handle here. Uh, entrapment exit handle there. This is your seat back folding levers here on both sides. And here is the trunk area, as you can see. Very, very nice and spacious. And if we fold the seats down, unlock, unlock them here. As you can see, you gain a little bit more cargo room. All right, underneath the floor mat is your compact spare tire with jack and tools. And in here is just a bunch of hardware and electronics, fuses and all that kind of stuff. And closing the trunk is as easy as doing that. Alrighty, there you go. The Saab 9.3 Linear review video basically in the dark. Uh, we hope you found the video informative. If you liked it, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews and our Instagram channel at brinsoj1. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.